Hi everyone, welcome back to the next of our 12 days of switch up videos. Today we're going to be looking at the 10 best ports. Yeah, so Mark, you've done one of these videos before on the channel, a little while ago now. So what we'll do is we'll put a link to that video in the top in comment because obviously there'll be some big games missing off of this list to avoid too much crossover with that list. So if there's something missing, go and have a watch of that and I'm sure you'll find it there. Exactly right, yeah. So there will absolutely be games on here. Before you leave a comment saying, oh, you forgot about The Witcher or whatever it is, <laughs> make sure you go and check out that video. All right, well, what are our best ports on the Nintendo Switch? Let's find out. First up then, we have, well, we might as well start with one that was number one from last time, and it's Alien Isolation. And I know this is one that Glenn is a big fan of. Yeah, so this is a game we spoke about in one of our previous lists in this 12 day period, which was the sci-fi list for obvious reasons. So we won't bang on about it too much in terms of the story, because we've done all that. But in terms of the port itself, many people, Mark, consider this to be possibly the best version of the game don't they yeah yeah there was a few things from digital foundry and others that just they put so much time and effort into this port and it looks incredible it runs really well and they added on all the things that you know i have to say it they added on gyro controls and all the things that i enjoy in that regard they didn't make it less scary though glenn which was quite upsetting <laughs> no i don't think i don't think that was their remit to be fair to make it less scary an alien game but, come on <laughs> but you, just you, to give some um, obviously a little bit of context in case you haven't seen the other video so obviously it's set in the alien universe and it's set somewhere between the first two films it, it kind of fills a void that those two films left if you like and tells its own mm. tale and it does it very very well to be fair doesn't it yeah it does if you like that kind if of you thing like that kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> definitely all right well next up then and a bit of a precursor to the sequel which is annoyingly coming via the cloud we have dying light um i believe it was the first time that uh you've played it on switch right glenn yeah we played uh multiplayer didn't we um yeah a, a few weeks back and uh yeah huge amount of fun really really good fun um so obviously it's a, a first person survival horror game i suppose is the best way to uh, to describe it and you, uh, it's the night time where the, that performance really needs to hold up, mm -hmm. isn't it? Where you go out on a, a mission and you're just swarmed by these enemies, these, uh, these zombies, I suppose, is the best way to describe them. Yeah, it's an open world zombie RPG, essentially, um, with parkour running in there. Um, it was out ages ago. I mean, it was originally... I, th I thought it was 360, but it wasn't out on the 360. I think it was planned to be released on the 360. I must have played it on the PS4 or something. Oh, okay, right. Um, yeah, potentially for performance reasons that it didn't come out on those older platforms. But um, yeah, it's been out for a long, long time. But Techland, the developer, have put so much into extra content. Um, and, the, and the fact that it runs this well on Switch, and actually they've added a new patch which locks it to 30 frames per second. You've got It's one of those where you actually get a definitive edition, and it actually is. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I remember uh, when the review came out, I think it was like November time, if memory serves mm. me, I do remember you mentioning, you know, some some slight performance issues. But as you say, they were patched fairly soon after that, to be fair, to bring the game up, up to speed. Uh, one thing worth mentioning, because I think this is still the case, it was definitely the case until relatively recently at least, is that this is still not available in some EU regions. Yeah, yeah it wasn't available in Germany, was it? It was Germany, but then because of that, I think they had to pull it from the EU eShop in general so i think in germany possibly the physical version is not available either right owing to the issue i think they've actually pulled it from the eu eShop completely so it's only a physical version available at the moment but hopefully that will be rectified soon yeah yes yeah, it was like some strange loophole wasn't it from back in the day when certain things were were banned is that right I believe so yeah without knowing the full story and if there's anyone that does know please do feel free to uh fill us in properly in the in the comment section but yes hopefully Whatever the reason, it will be uh, it'll be resolved soon and available to a much wider audience. All right. Okay, so on to a series that I know you haven't played a great deal of, so I might have to take the lead on this one. And it's The Life is Strange True Colours. Well, I, I have played Did the you... first game through to completion, yeah. uh, but I haven't played this one, this new newer one at all. Um, so I know the premise oh. of, of the games, because I'm assuming they, they all kind of follow the same idea of a character that ends up having some sort of su su uh, sorry supernatural power. That's right, isn't it? 
That's correct. Yes. Yeah, they do. Um, this one, the power, I guess you could say, was um, some people felt it was a little bit lacklustre. Okay. Do you know what it is? Uh, I know it's something to do with emotions. You can manipulate emotions or something. It, it's yeah. It's a, <laughs> it's essentially the power of empathy. Oh, okay. <laughs> By the power of empathy, I am. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You can't imagine, you know, <laughs> grabbing your sword and screaming that, can you? <laughs> By the power of... <laughs> yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so, yeah, by the power of empathy, she, she could basically read strong emotions. So if someone's really, really upset or if they're really angry... She she gets angry or she gets upset as well, oh. and then she can also kind of read their thoughts during those moments. Okay, see that's not how I because I read up on this game. Like I said, I played the first one, read up on this one, and yeah. the way it described it of manipulating emotions, I, I kind of thought it was a bit of like mind control or something like that involved, but <laughs> clearly not. Yeah, no, it's um, it's it. I, I think I I liked it. I, I thought it was going to be honestly. I thought it was going to be terrible. Right. It. it, it it presented itself artistically and everything a certain way okay. and, it, and it felt like it was going to have um, some underlying agendas and things that it wanted to push on people but it wasn't like that Okay. and funnily enough when I did the review and said as much a lot of the comments were like oh I'm not buying this because it's whatever mm -hmm. and then I was like well actually no <laughs> you got to play it it's, it's actually a very good game right. Yeah. So so yeah I thought it was good but as far as ports go like my goodness it's, it's one of the best ports we've had for, by a long shot I know there, there will always be a few stutters and things with the Unreal Engine mm. but it looks incredible well I mean the Unreal Engine seems to have been a bit hit and miss doesn't it on the uh, on the switch from developer to developer yeah. and obviously by the sounds of it at least this one is uh, they've got this one right which is good to hear yeah no absolutely they, they really have alright on to one that I'd be interested to hear if you have played actually and it's Skyrim Yes, I have played Skyrim. Um, I haven't played it as much as the uh, its predecessor, which was called Oblivion, wasn't it? Yeah, Oblivion. I, I played yeah. a huge amount of Oblivion on the Xbox 360. Uh, got all the achievements and what have you. Uh, and then they released like DLC, which took away my gamer score thing, which annoyed me. But <laughs> uh, that's another story. <laughs> but uh, in terms of Skyrim, to not uh, deviate too much, I've played about about ten hours, but. As much as that might sound a lot in some games, that equates to, you know, walking around a bit in, in Skyrim, doesn't it? So, Yeah, yeah. Ten hours could be an afternoon stroll. Exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I've done about 400 hours in Skyrim now, oh, which geez. is ludicrous. <laughs> Do you know what? I actually went back to it recently. I've probably done another 50 this year. Wow. It's just such a good game. And now my kids are getting to that age where they like stuff like this. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they just It just blows their mind. They're like, can you walk over to that mountain? And I'm like... Yes, I can. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, I do and, love that about it. Without knowing as much about it as you, just that that sense of freedom. You do find yourself immersed in the world that it builds, don't you? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Do you know about the um, sequel being an Xbox exclusive? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah. How do you feel about that kind of stuff? Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I think we have to. We do have to remember that that gaming is a business, you know, and and people are going to go where the money is. Obviously, if nothing was an exclusive and you could just buy a console and have the games you wanted, it would be wonderful, you know. But I don't think that's necessarily realistic, you know. I mean, for me, it, it doesn't matter too much. I'm hoping it'll be on, um, what's it called? Uh, I was talking about it yesterday, the Xbox uh, oh, Game, Pass. Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. Because honestly, that thing's amazing. Yeah. I, don't, I don't even have an Xbox <laughs> and I can play, you know, the Halos and some other bits and bobs yeah. just on my iPad yeah. screen using the cloud. That's very cool, it's yeah. crazy. All right, so, yeah, that was the, the red herring of that one. Um, Skyrim is, as Glenn said, very good, but it's quite old. I wanted to include it on this list just because we didn't have it in the last one and a lot of comments were saying, come on now, lads. So uh, we put it on there. Um, next up then, and these are ones that I don't think you've played, but you definitely should, and it's uh, the Subnautica and, and the sequel. I, I'm getting these for Christmas. <laughs> I, know, I know I'm getting these for Christmas, so no, I haven't. I haven't played them, but I'm looking forward to them. There you go. Someone's been peering into Santa's sack. <laughs> oh, well, you know, just a just a quick peek, just to make sure he's got the order right. You know what it's like. <laughs> Keep your head out of that sack, Glenn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the Subnautica games, and I think, again, I think these are another example on the same engine. Uh, I'm not, I, th I think they are. But they were a really interesting take on survival genre. Hmm. 
this time you you, you know you, you crash on a on an alien planet but it's an ocean planet and yeah you've essentially got to survive but you start out just with a little pod okay um and it's it, it's funny isn't it you sometimes a premise can be like a bit you might think okay that doesn't sound very fun hmm. but they've done it really well it's it's really good it's really good progression um it's essentially for anyone that hasn't played it i don't want to spoil it but you need to get your scanner as soon as you get your scanner it becomes a little bit more like something like no man's sky where you can go and scan the different items in the world and then get new blueprints and it's got that exploratory feel to it yeah i mean i i'm not a huge fan of survival games you know things like green hell and uh, and what have you but it's the yeah. uh, the aquatic angle of this one that intrigues me to be honest yeah yeah and they've they usually always have some kind of um free play creative mode as well these kinds of games right. so that you can just you know freedom mode i think it's called here um so you can just enjoy without having to worry about all of the survival aspects oh nice well that's good to hear that's good. yeah what's in terms of the yeah, pool, that, um itself mark what's has it always been as good as it is now or is it one that's been patched a bit or um yeah well firstly before that comment, i'll stop that guy writing his comment it's not unreal at all it's unity oh it's unity okay. um okay. and secondly it's it's they're not perfect ports. They're, they're not perfect. They're just, I'd say they were like a, I don't know, they're a good port. They've, they've got a few issues, but actually, when you look at the scale and the scope of the maps, yes, yeah. it's pretty impressive, yeah. but, but they do still have their moments. Okay. I just think they deserve a spot on this list because, for the most part, they're, they're good enough and they have received patches since launch. I think, I mean, that's a fair point, isn't it? Not every game necessarily on this list is going to be incredible port-wise. Yeah, because it's just that's again talking about realism a second ago. It's it's unrealistic, but if they're as good as they <laughs> can be and they play well enough that you can enjoy them and still have the benefits of the Switch's unique um, selling point, such as portable mode, then that's kind of what you want, isn't it? Okay, right. Well, next up then we've got World War Z, which was the uh, uh, what year was it? Um, 2013 Brad Pitt zombie movie. Yep, uh, and and also became. A game. Now, I don't know if you've watched the game or watched the film, sorry. I haven't seen the, the game. film, no. I, I haven't seen the film. Um, and I've seen bits of the game. I uh, watched your review of it, of course, as well. So I know what it's all about. But yeah, no, it's uh, it's not one that I've, that I've seen, I'll be honest. So did you say you haven't watched the film? I haven't seen the film, no. I haven't watched it. I kind of got... Oh. The thing is, I mean, as a big horror fan, without wanting to sound pretentious, because I don't, really don't mean it to come out this way, but things like zombies, you know, were... As a, as a horror fan, you've seen that for many years. And then zombies became hugely mainstream and were in everything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I kind of got a little fatigued with, with zombies. So it's too like, mainstream for you. A bit Sounds too a mainstream. Bit yeah, and everyone, all of a sudden everyone was loving it. They're wearing <laughs> t-shirts with zombies on, you know. And uh, I was part of the zombie gang before zombies were cool, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit pretentious. Yeah, yeah, right. it does Let's sound. move on. The more, the more I said, I was like, oh, crap, it has become pretentious. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, uh, never mind. Um, anyway, the game, yeah, came out, came out in 2019. Originally came out in 2021 for Switch. Um, I think, I think this was either Saber Interactive or Panic Button. It was one of the, it was one of the big porting sure names Saber. in the I Switch. Think it was Saber. Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Um, and I think the main thing with this one is it's not. If you played this after having played another port, or uh, sorry, another version on like PS5, you're going to be like, oh, that looks like a dog's dinner, <laughs> but. For what it is on a Switch, a handheld, like we say, with a thousand enemies on screen, maintaining a relatively good frame rate, that's enough. You know, that, that that's enough for me. That's that's pretty impressive. I think it removed a few of the the game modes. If I'm if I'm right, I thought it removed the, the some of the multiplayer modes. People can let us know in the comments. That's a fair point, and some people obviously will be concerned by that, and that's that's fine. But as you say, it's that carnage and that pandemonium still being in the game in terms of how many enemies there are that's kind of the the important part i would say it reminds me a little bit of a game that's not on this list but maybe similar is mortal kombat 11 which visually took a huge hit like a, a huge hit it was incredibly <laughs> blurry but it maintained 60 fps you know and it's kind of what do you want you know if you have to have one or the other which would you prefer and it sounds like world war z has, has uh, picked its battles correctly in that on that front you know yeah exactly yeah you basically performance is king always yeah yeah and let's be honest when you've got a thousand zombies running at you you're not unless you're a real loser sat there going oh 
he's a bit pixelated. <laughs> <laughs> As he's eating your face off. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Come on. All right. Okay, well, that's the first, like, six games done. Let's move on to the second half of this list and start with one that I know you're going to know all about, and it's Zelda Skyward Sword. Yeah, so, um, I mean, this was <laughs> my maybe one and only uh, contribution to this <laughs> this video, but the reason I, I picked this one, it's not as obvious as some of the other games, you know, your, your Alien Isolations or even World War Z in terms of what it had to maintain on screen at once, but... Nintendo did bump this up from 30 to 60 frames per second for this new release on the Switch. And what they also yeah. included, which I, I think makes it a superior port, is the uh, the addition of button controls. So the original Skyward Sword came out for the Wii, and it made use of the Wii Motion Plus, uh, which was yeah. Nintendo's kind of new big thing at the time. It was an attachment that went into the Wii Remote that almost gave one-to-one -one correspondence in terms of movement. I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy the motion controls for that game. Gimmick. Yeah. I mean, it, don't. I'm not. Maybe gimmick is a, is not quite fair because it did work and it. You know, it was fair play to them for trying it. And obviously, every other uh, company then had its its own version of the Wii Remote that you know the Move or whatever it's called. And so it was obviously something that people wanted to try and embrace. But they should have had button controls in there as well. Was my gripe. You know. Yeah. And yeah. this version does exactly that. It includes button controls and you still have your motion controls via the uh, the Joy-Con. So I think they've, yeah. they've righted the wrongs of that first game. And because of that, it's a it's a very good port. Yeah, I played a bit of this, actually. I played the, probably the first area yep. um, where there's that, big, there's that big pool of water and whatnot and you're doing a few little bits and bobs. It's more of a tutorial, I guess. Yeah, yeah, the um, early stage, yeah. The, yeah, I mean, it, it actually seems really nice. It's, I was surprised by how unhyped people were well a lot of people were for it compared i think everyone's kind of got wind waker on the brain haven't they wind waker and uh, twilight princess i think are the games that people would like most but nintendo mm. ported those or remastered those for the wii u so whether we'll see those again i don't know um and i don't know if maybe skyward sword was a bit of a divisive game for the reasons i just mentioned and maybe that's why yeah. people weren't as bothered about it coming across but to give credit where it's due, in terms of the story that it tells, it's a wonderful Zelda game. And in terms of the the dungeon design, it's very, very good. It was just those extra elements that I didn't like back in the day. And the fact that they've now been fixed means that I think it mm. deserves a place on this list. Yeah, yes, that's fair enough. All right. Moving on then to another classic series. Um, we've got Tony Hawk's 1 and 2, which recently released on the Switch. Um, did, were you, I know you weren't a PlayStation player, so you probably didn't play the originals. I played one of them, I, I can't tell you which, on the N64. A friend of mine had it. Uh, but I, as from what I remember, they weren't... I, I, obviously, I didn't compare in the day because I only played that one version, but from what I've heard, they weren't as good. I think some of the music was different and what have you. But So my, my knowledge is limited on this series, I must say. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair enough. I think the original was out in like... I think it was before the millennium. Uh, yeah, it was probably, like 1999. Yeah, I would say so. Late 90s, yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> I'm so old. <laughs> That's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Oh, I'm just going to sit here and feel bad for the rest <laughs> of this section. Um, yeah. So Tony Hawk's, they really stuck to the originals. This was, it's, it's almost one for one in terms of some of the level designs. Um, you know, you got the, the is it the hangar? I think it's called the hangar yep. or the warehouse. I always say it the wrong way around. <laughs> um, but it's very similar. The the only problem really from in my from my perspective for the Switch port was the split screen. I mean, it looks jank as anything. Okay. But again, it's not something you care about, is it? It's it's the performance yeah. and it runs well. I suppose you have to maintain or have that sense of speed for it to to work in a game like this. And I take it the Switch version gives you that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it does. And I'm, I'm not going to go into details about what Tony Hawk's is. It's a skating game. <laughs> You've got different tricks, and you're trying to rank up the highest score, and then collect the, like hidden things. And it's Tony Hawk's. So that's a bridge too far for me. I was going to. Um, there was one on the. Must have been the PS4 a few years ago. I was like I say, I've never. You know, I, skateboarding's not something I ever got into. I must be honest. It's not. I don't think it's a hugely English thing. I'm not saying no one in England does it, but it's not as big a thing. I don't think. Um, but. I, did, I was going to buy a PS4 version of it a few years ago because I heard it had the, the Ninja Turtles in and that was enough for me. 
But then I read like the most scathing reviews of it ever. Like it was an absolute awful, awful game, whichever version of it or whichever new uh, iteration of the series it was. So I didn't yeah. buy it in the end. But I don't know. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me what what was the matter with that game. Was it was it as bad as people said? Because I remember it actually like it got pelted <laughs> in the reviews on Amazon when I was going to go and buy this game. So please do let me know what what was the problem with that one. There you go. And I used to skateboard, so there you go. Oh well, yeah, of course you. I did, mean, I would. Yeah. I did. Anything I, did. I, I said, I think oh, I yeah, might. It doesn't happen. Oh, I did it. Oh, of course you did. Bloody hell. I did. I used to skateboard. <laughs> uh, but the thing is, I think my skateboard got stolen, which is just classic, and it's standard issue <laughs> around these parts. I'm surprised um, the wheels didn't second, get taken. And it had a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle on the bottom. Oh, fair play. You just redeemed yourself. You, you are the man yeah. now. You are absolutely the yeah, man. Yeah, and it got stolen. I was really quite upset about that. But it was a bit of a blessing in disguise because I was absolutely crap. So I remember skateboarding kind of becoming a thing over here. I must have been about six or seven at the time, probably because of movies that you've seen on VHS, American movies where it was, you know, huge. Yep. And I do remember it, it becoming a bit of a craze, don't get me wrong. And I, I did uh, have one myself for a while, but it lived in the in the garden shed and never got used. But then I very much remember <laughs> it dying out and that was that and BMXs became the thing again, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I had a BMX as well. I broke my arm. <laughs> oh, so, nice. you know. Well, not nice. That's, that's terrible, but yeah, nice you had a BMX. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we'll do... Uh, we've got two left. We will do Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Okay, yeah. So, uh, I don't know if you played the Ori games. I played the first one, Blind Forest, um, and haven't finished it, hence the reason I haven't played the second one. But from what I've played on the first one, oh, man, just beautiful beautiful game looks lovely yeah. runs well just has a i don't know how to describe it like a, a beautiful melancholy about it you know yes yes yeah they go for that studio ghibli style yes a studio ghibli whatever you want to call it i think it's kind of um, somewhere in between it's a bit like zubiri if you're going for the the japanese pronunciation ah it's got knowledge sod all to do with this video but <laughs> <laughs> Someone tunes in. Why are they talking about gibbets? <laughs> yeah. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> it's the turkey edition. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, it has that melancholy about it. Um, it's just, it's just beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it is lovely. And, and I mean, not, not nothing to the port, but um, just incredibly well designed. Lovely, tight level structure. Very good Metroidvania. Yeah, yeah exactly right. Um, and, and I think it deserves a place on this list because you can look at ports of 3D games and be like, oh, that's really difficult, that's impressive. But actually, the Microsoft Studios, there, there's a lot of effects in this one. I think this is another one that um, Digital Foundry covered. And they were just amazed by the amount of work that had gone into this. Uh, and it looks incredible. So yeah, I think it deserves a place on this list uh, for sure. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because obviously you're you're the, the technical one out of the pair of us, but... Hmm. It's nice to hear you say that because I think maybe sometimes 2D games get overlooked in terms of the work that has yeah. to go into them, the lighting effects, things like that, that this game has in spades. So yeah, no, no I'm, yes. I'm glad it's on here. It's nice to uh, to have it representing 2D games. Yeah, it is repping and it's repping hard. It's doing well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Next and finally then, we have Doom Eternal. So we go from what we just said to uh, a 3D uh yeah, yeah there's the other end of the spectrum, exactly. Exactly right. I was actually playing this yesterday. Oh, nice. Good game. Yeah. Very, very good game. I don't know if you've played the new, newer Doom games. I have played uh, 2016. I've played on the PS4, though, not the Switch. Um, yeah. And I've played a little bit of Eternal, not not a huge amount. I, I'm i old school, mate. I, I prefer the, <laughs> the older ones, you know. But that's not to say, that's not to take anything away from these games there. They're fantastic. They're just um, thrill a minute visceral in your face full on action <laughs> aren't they oh uh, yeah it's doom if you play the 2016 one you've basically played this it's it's got the same mechanics whereby you shoot them a few times they start to flash you run up slice them in half they they spew out loads of uh, ammo and other bits and bobs which is a bit weird it has to be said <laughs> um and it's it's just a mechanic designed to keep the pace going um and, and it works really well it just keeps you constantly moving if you stay still you die Right, Which, yeah, that's it, yeah. I think it's quite clever, really. It works well. I think so, yeah. It's, it, I mean, it was it, a know, bit of a it's... culture shock when I first played it. And I mean, that's not mm -hmm. to say that the first Doom was not high octane, and you know, but it, it is different, you know. And when I played 2016, I was kind of expecting a prettier version of that. 
and uh, yeah. and when I played it, it was like, oh wow, okay, this is, <laughs> you know, I stood still, and now I'm dead. Okay, yeah, but yeah, once you get into that mindset, yeah, it's great fun, great fun. It is, and I think they've tra- they've trodden the line quite nicely between honouring what's been but updating it without being ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree. Yeah, because very often, well, I think there was a period after the originals came out when technology started to advance a little bit, maybe like 2010, when remakes of games were exactly as you say, they were trying to be exactly the same with prettier graphics mm. or putting a third-person view into like first person, just weird things like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure Duke Nukem did that, didn't they? They had a third person. God. And it's like, what are you doing? Duke Nukem's a video all on its own, isn't it? That series, dear me. I mean, that, <laughs> just Duke Nukem forever. I mean, you could talk about yeah. that game forever, <laughs> you know, in yeah. terms of what it went yeah. through. <laughs> exactly right. So, yeah. This this didn't do that. It just it took some risks, but sensible risks, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a great game. It's a shame that it doesn't Eternal. I'm talking about doesn't have a physical release. Um, that is unfortunate. That's strange. Yeah, it's strange, but it is what it is, I suppose. Okay, brilliant. Well, let us know down in the comments, please. Um, any games that aren't on this half of the list and they're not on the other half of the list. Remember, the link will be in the description in the top pin comment. Um, that we've maybe missed out um, that you loved and yeah all that's left really is for Glenn to say goodbye yeah uh, thank you for watching again um, I hope you're enjoying this series so far it's, um, we've tried to keep it varied in terms of the games we cover and the topics we speak about so yeah hopefully there'll be a, another one tomorrow so please do look out for that thank you to our, our patrons as always for your continued support and to, to each and every one of you for watching our videos take care and uh, happy gaming happy gaming